Hi everyone. Maybe you ask yourself, what is Microsoft Fabric? And why is there a need for another data product? My name is Wolfgang and I would like to guide you through Microsoft Fabric, what it is and why I think that there is a need for another data platform product. Let's dive into it. Maybe you are here because you've watched the uh, build keynote, the build 2023 uh, keynote by Amir, by Arun, Patrick and Justina. Or maybe you've heard about the new thing that is introduced and was introduced at that keynote. Well, Microsoft Fabric. And the big question is, is it yet another data platform product? So the question is, why is there even a need for one or multiple different data products? Well, there are different people, there are different roles working on data, working on data integration, machine learning, data science, building reports, building semantic models and so on and so forth. And there are more than much and too much tools that work with data that build, now they are to build data solutions. And what is really a uh, not that kind of easy to solve, especially when talking to customers. Hey, what does it cost? Every one of those pieces, well, it costs. It costs differently. And there was a thing Microsoft introduced some years ago, and they called it Azure Synapse Analytics. And they introduced the unified analytics platform having different analytic runtimes, SQL based, smart based and data explorer ADX based ones, having a data lake in there and combining everything under one umbrella. I really like that idea and we've built many projects based on Azure Synapse, but the problem was there were different tools involved. Even though it was called Azure Synapse Analytics, well, there was the data warehousing part, the SQL dedicated pools, there was a SQL serverless pool, and there was a data lake, there was Spark, there were ADX pools and, and uh, technologies to work with uh, the code. And when I talk about code, Azure Synapse Analytics was mainly focused for pro code developers. So you needed some knowledge to build data engineering using Spark, to build your data warehouse using T-SQL. And what was one of those main things that weren't quite good was there were different data storage mechanisms. There was the data lake. You could even build a data lake house using Delta, but you could only build it with uh, Spark. You could read it by uh, SQL serverless, but with the data warehousing part, the dedicated pools, well, it got different because there was a database involved and that database used a different storage mechanism. And there was data duplication. So we needed to copy data from the data lake into our data warehouse, copy it back and bring it back to the data lake, for example. And when talking about cost and licensing, hmm, it wasn't easy because it was hard to estimate. There were costs for the data lake storage. There were costs for the dedicated pools. If you uh, use a SQL serverless, pool, well, there was cost involved by the amount of data you transferred. So it wasn't easy to estimate and it wasn't easy for customers to understand why we as consultants couldn't talk about the price up front. And so let's dream, let's dream about an ideal analytic solution. Let's imagine what if you just log into a single portal to do all your analytics and you don't need to learn new stuff. You could reuse the knowledge you already know about current Azure data services like Data Factory to do the data integration, uh, Spark to build your data engineering pipelines, machine learning. You could even use Power BI. And uh, wouldn't it be nice if that analytic solution is provided as a software, as a service? So you just instantiate another instance of that dream analytics solution and it's just there. And what if there is no data duplication involved? Because maybe those different analytic runtimes, they speak the same data format. They store the data in the same format. And 
Ideally, that format is an open standard that is understood by many workloads, not even those workloads in that dream analytic solution, but maybe also understood by others. What if the solution provides, in addition, an end-to-end -end security, gives you information about the data lineage and compliance, and helps you with the licensing? Just imagine easy licensing, because you only buy a capacity and you instantiate another instance of your software as a service. And that is the idea behind Microsoft Fabric. Microsoft used the existing tools ranging from Data Factory for data integration, Synapse for the data engineering using Spark, the data warehousing part out of Synapse, the data science part, and also the real-time analytics, the ADX. In addition, it combined Power BI under that umbrella. So there is the best of the breed out of Microsoft Synapse put together with Data Factory, put together with Power BI, and add using a simple and common data storage. The question now is, isn't that something that could be called Synapse V2? Well, maybe, maybe it could, but Microsoft Fabric, it's something more. It's the data factory pipelines, it's the Synapse data engineering, the data warehousing and so on. And there is no difference data, data storage involved. They all use one lake. And one lake, it's the unified data foundation for every one of those workloads operating in Microsoft Fabric. And at one lake, that is the really magic that sits behind and sits below all those workflows. So let's dive a little bit deeper into that one lake. The one lake, the idea is it's a virtual, a logical data lake for your whole organization. You don't have to worry, because we are in a software as a service environment, you don't have to worry to instantiate another storage account. You don't need to configure networking and everything, because one lake is automatically provisioned with every tenant. So there is one one lake. Within that one lake, well, we've got workspaces, and they are the security boundaries as of now. Workspaces, as you know, out of Power BI, they are the boundaries. And every thing that is stored in a workspace, well, it uses the Delta format, Delta Parquet format. Maybe you've heard about Parquet format, compressed, um, I, I often call it metadata aware CSV files, compressed ones. And Delta uses and brings transaction logic, transactional logic, ACID compliant to files, to Parquet files. And every one of those workloads, well, they store their data in one lake using Delta format. If it's a pipeline that brings data into one lake, it stores the output as a Delta table. If you are building a data lake house, it stores all the data in Delta format. If you build a data warehouse in Fabric, it stores the data in Delta format. If you build Power BI models, in Microsoft Fabric, it uses Delta format as the data storage. And even with that, no data duplication, because everyone and every workload understands, writes and reads those data Delta formats. We can even enhance that and we can bring shortcuts to internal artifacts. So we can provide as you maybe know those SIM links in your file storage. You can create a short, uh, shortcut to other parts in your uh, one lake. For example, from the service telemetry, a shortcut to customer data, which relies and is stored in another workspace. And even further, you can create shortcuts to external artifacts. You don't need a data pipeline. You can create shortcuts to existing Azure Data Lake storages or to external artifacts like Amazon storages. And when we talk about that one lake, that data lake, and when we talk about no data duplication, when we talk about Delta Parquet, and we talk about a data model in a lake, 
Doesn't that sound like a data lake house? And yes, it really sounds like a data lake house. So Microsoft Fabric is really focused on the lake. It's really focusing on data lake house architectures. It's really focusing on the central storage in a data lake storage account using the open standard Delta Parquet format. But it doesn't come for free, well, for sure. What you need is you need capacities and that really uh, makes it easy for the licensing part because with data solutions built before Fabric, well, we had costs for data factory, we had costs for SQL, we had costs for the data lake, we had costs for SQL dedicated pools. And now, well, we need to license and subscribe and instantiate universal compute capacities. And those compute capacities are used by every one of those workloads that are listed here. So we buy uh, a capacity and if you do data integration, well, they are using those capacities. If you are doing data engineering using Spark in Fabric, it uses those compute capacities. If you are starting up and building a data warehouse, it uses those compute capacities. And even on the business intelligence side, well, Power BI needs and uses those compute capacities. With that, Microsoft Fabric, to sum it up, it's a new unified software as a service analytics suite. It's in public preview as of now. It combines those best of breed analytic tools, those tools you already maybe are familiar with, like Data Factory, Synapse, Spark, Power BI, and those workloads operate together because they all rely and work on the data foundation, the one lake itself. That one lake uses and Fabric uses an open standard, the Delta format. It's based on a data lake architecture and what is really, really one of my favorites, it's using even Power BI because Power BI got a new connection mode. Import mode, it's old. Direct query mode, it's old. There's direct lake mode, which allows Power BI to directly connect, to directly read all the data that is stored in one lake, all the data that is stored in Delta files. In, I tried it in quite nice performance. The consumption itself, it makes it easier to estimate the costs because every one of those workloads needs a capacity and those capacities, you need to buy them and the capacity, the performance it shared uh, across those workloads. I hope I was able to talk and tell you a little bit about Microsoft Fabric. I really plan to record some more uh, videos about Microsoft Fabric, about all those different workloads, about the one lake, about the parquet format and so on and so forth. But with that, I hope you enjoyed. You can try it as of now. It's in public preview. See you next time.